if you solve this puzzle, you get $5,000. Or at least you would if it was still 1985. So unlike the Money Hunt puzzle, which had a $1 million prize and a lot of like drama behind the scenes, I actually think this one is going to be solvable. However, at this point of filming the video, I have not done any research into this puzzle because I wanted to go into it as if it was 1985 and I just took this off the shelf. I didn't want any spoilers of what the final image would look like. So let's start with the jigsaw puzzle and then we will see if we can solve the treasure hunt. Okay, so before I get started on this puzzle, let me take a minute to tell you about today's sponsor, KiwiCo. So the reason why I like this jigsaw puzzle is because there's an activity on top of the puzzle. And if any of you like activities too, then you're gonna love KiwiCo. So KiwiCo delivers a monthly crate to your door with fun, hands-on activities. And so this is to make an electro-luminescent sculpture. Like, who would even think to do that? So everything that you need is included in the crate, and there are instruction videos online to walk you through it. They also sent me this one, where you can make your own watercolor clock. Again, everything that you need is included, and I love how they include educational context for all of their projects. Like looking at a page like this, it just feels so nostalgic to me. This is exactly the kind of educational activity that my parents would have gotten my sister and I when we were kids. So they have crate options for babies, kids of all ages and adults. All of their crates are STEAM based, which is science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And with the holidays coming up, a monthly subscription box is such a good idea because it's like you're getting a gift every single month, all year long. Or you can also just buy individual crates from the KiwiCo online store. These are such good gifts that are gonna keep your kids active and learning all throughout the holiday break. So if this has checked off some of the gifts off of your list for you, or you just wanna try them for yourself, you can go to kiwico.com slash Karen Puzzles and use code Karen Puzzles for 50% off your first month of a KiwiCo subscription. And all of that info is also gonna be right down in the description. All right, so now let's get back to the puzzle. So it's a 1,000 piece puzzle. Um, <laughs> look at those pieces. It's super colorful. I'm really loving this illustration style. Looking at these pieces, I definitely think that what is on the cover is part of the puzzle. However, I would not be surprised if the image extends a lot past what's on the, on the cover because they don't wanna give away all of the clues right here like without you solving it. And also a big portion of it is covered by this graphic. And if we look at the sides of the box, it never gives you a full image of what the picture looks like. What is that going to say? Attitude? Maybe? <laughs> is that going to be a clue? <laughs> wow, 
Well, this is a big puzzle. I have the edge done. I did a little bit of sorting. I'm 37 minutes into it. So now that I have the edge done, we can see exactly how much of this like takes up the actual puzzle. And you can see how this edge lines up with this edge of the box. Like there's this guy holding a necklace. You can see him again um, right, right there. So here's that bird that basically goes about there, which is about two thirds of the way down this puzzle. So everything down here is a total mystery to me. And then again, you can see here this little bit of the rainbow. So that's gonna be about here. And that is uh, about half of the puzzle. <laughs> so everything on this side, again, is a total mystery. So this is gonna be difficult because I can only follow along on the box for this much of the puzzle. And as you can see, this is a very busy design. There's a whole lot of green. The only thing I sorted out so far are uh, all of these blue pieces. That'll be the sky and then this river here. But let's go ahead and see what this banner says. Uh, it does not say attitude. It says heart, heart, heartitude. Hmm. Is that a clue? I don't really know what kind of clues we're supposed to be looking for yet. <laughs> oh, but also, really quick, I just wanted to say that the piece quality actually looks really good. These pieces are nice and thick. They have a little bit of a sheen. They're not too glossy. Um, they just feel like really solid in your hand. They definitely lock together pretty well. I was able to move sections around. The only thing I'm noticing is that sometimes these connectors get very tiny. So this one is just barely hanging on. And I pulled out all of these that must have broken off. But in general, I think the quality looks really good and I shouldn't have false fits uh, because the pattern is just so busy. Oh man, <laughs> I'm up to three hours of puzzling, but I am loving this. This is so much fun. So since I only know what this corner is going to look like, I just have all of these like sections put together and no idea where to put them. So it's been really fun to try to remember like these pieces are here because I think they're gonna go over here but then these are just kind of grouped by texture and they could fit in anywhere. I am almost to the point where all of the pieces that I have left fit uh, just in one layer. That's been the biggest hassle is not being able to see all of the pieces at once, but I'm getting close to being able to see all of them. But you can just see how detailed this illustration is. Like once I get this all put together, there is going to be so much to just parse through and look at and study. I'm, I mean, the puzzle itself is fine. The, the scavenger hunt, I don't know, I'm intimidated. <laughs>
Oh man, it is so hard to pull myself away from this to give you guys an update. I am having so much fun with it. Uh, you can definitely see that this corner where I have the picture to go off of is definitely way more filled in than all the rest of this. I'm up to about five hours right now, but I definitely think I can finish this within the next hour. It's definitely going so much more quickly. I really don't have that many pieces left. I just have all of these fountains and I just have not been able to connect them. I don't know where they go. <laughs> Those were all of my little sections now put into place. So this is everything that's left. We're in the home stretch. All right, I am almost done, but uh, we have a few of these little tabs that are missing. Do you see them? So I have three of them that came out of the box. Let's get these teeny, teeny, tiny puzzle pieces in place. All right, well, I'm still missing a couple of them. Hopefully there's not a super important clue in these teeny tiny sections. <laughs> so that took me five and a half hours and this puzzle is so delightful. I really liked it. But oh my God, now the real work begins. This, this scavenger hunt type of thing, this is not my type of puzzle. <laughs> All right, so I filmed all of that about a month ago. Doing this research and trying to figure out the scavenger hunt was kind of my own personal project while I was editing all of those Worlds videos. And I also just want to apologize for my voice in this part. Um, I'm still getting over a cold. I'm still a little sniffly, so I'm sorry about that. So. If you don't want spoilers and you want to try to figure this out for yourself, you can go ahead and keep on watching because I have not solved it. I haven't really made any real progress. <laughs> All right, so here's the back of the box. Let's come in here and take a closer look at everything. So they said that it's prize puzzle number one, which makes me think that they wanted this to be a series. Um, as far as I can tell, this is the only one that they released like this. Then it says, puzzle lovers, welcome to a new dimension. <laughs> So everything here at the beginning is a little generic, except it says, who knows, the title may even be your first clue. So an unlikely place is a clue. Okay, how it works. First, you do the jigsaw puzzle. We did that. Then we're gonna find representations of different items, some buried within other objects, some in plain view. Scores of these representations are clues which are relevant to solving the secret of the prize puzzle, while some are not applicable at all. The adjacent poem represents a clue itself. Okay, so it says scores. Now a score is 20. 
So if they're saying scores plural, that's at least 40 items that are going to be relevant to the answer. And then there's also going to be some red herrings. Now, our first clue is right here in the middle. It says, look to the center and on the ground, look to the trees and look for a sound. When I was looking at this picture, I was like, what does look for sound mean? Like, are we supposed to find music notes? Are we supposed to say things out loud? And then it's like a homonym. I, I don't know. I haven't really figured that out. Okay, so then they say that uh, when you have figured out all of the clues, there is a specific place where $5,000 has been hidden, but only theoretically. Please keep your shovels, climbing boots, and snorkel gear stowed. You never need to leave your chair in order to find the prize. And I feel like all of these types of puzzles have to say that after what happened with the masquerade puzzle. If you don't know that story, look it up because it's crazy. So the answer is in the continental United States, either on land or in water. And its discovery is specific. Uh, for example, the Northwest corner on the base of the Statue of Liberty and not as general as New Orleans. Okay, moving into more of the specific rules. If there has to be a tiebreaker, um, they're gonna ask all of the tying contestants to numerically list and identify those clues they, uh, they figured out. So this is all just kind of legal corporate language about how the tie would work. But uh, that makes me think that there are a lot of different clues where some, some people could list a lot more than other people. So the money hunt gave you a specific thing that came with the puzzle, like a little card that you would write your answer on and send in. For this one, you just have to um, print or type your name and address on a three by five piece of paper, and then also write down your answer. And so the specific question that they're asking is, where is the unlikely place the money has been theoretically hidden? So you have to get it in by December 31st, 1985 to this address. They said that the winner would be notified by January 30th, uh, so like within the next month. If you want to receive a copy of the solution, again, you can mail in a thing. Uh, requests for the solution will not be fulfilled later than June 30th, 1986. <laughs> we just missed it by, what, 33 years? <laughs> so those were all of the rules. And if you wanna read all of this for yourself, I'll have a high quality photo of this down in the description. On the sides of the box, they don't give you any additional information that would be at all relevant. And again, there's like nothing on the front. So the place to start is with this poem. Look to the center and on the ground, look to the trees and look for sound. So I feel like all of the stuff that's in the trees is going to be somehow relevant. How these form clues, I could not tell you. There's also this signpost that says, look for sounds. So that's a big clue. They really want you to look for sounds. But what does that mean? How do you look for a sound? <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> like there's this guy's shirt, which is a C with a line over it. Is that like a phonetic symbol or something? I don't know. Like we have these signs, six miles, a clue finders trail. I mean, we have all of these different people doing all kinds of stuff, but I, I mean, I, I just, oh, there's someone playing the flute. That's a sound. But what, what do you get from that? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know how to solve this. Here's a doctor um, over here with a tree. So maybe it's something with like, sayings like a doctor a day or an, ap an apple a day keeps the doctor away and this guy doesn't have any apples, but I don't know. How is that relevant to the rest of this puzzle? I mean, there's a quilt here with a three and a six and, and this is very similar to her dress, which has a zero or an O. But what do you do with that? I don't know. So if anyone is better at this kind of thing than I am, I've got a new project for you. <laughs> Please help, I don't know. I don't know what it means.
Okay, so as always, when I look at these uh, vintage puzzles, I always try to come at it from a manufacturing angle as well. You know, even if we can't figure this out, maybe there's someone out there who worked on this puzzle who still knows the answer. So what I did is I got in touch with some past employees of Great American Puzzle Factory through LinkedIn. Two people got back to me. Uh, they both worked there after this puzzle was released and neither of them had ever even heard of it. So it's not like this puzzle was a big dramatic story or like legend throughout the company. It seems like they gave out the prize and then they all moved on. But they did both tell me to get in touch with Pat, who was the founder of the Great American Puzzle Factory. I looked her up, I found a handful of articles over the years that she was quoted in, but nothing about this puzzle specifically. But I did manage to get in touch with her. Unfortunately, though, all she could tell me is that she does think it was solved and she's pretty sure the prize was paid out. But it was so long ago that she couldn't give me anything else about who won the prize, what the answer was, like any other details. So, of course, I tried looking the puzzle up online, but the only place online that I could find any trace of it was four listings on WorthPoint. And if you don't know, I talk about WorthPoint a lot. It's basically an eBay archive site. So these are past eBay auctions that have happened in, in the past. Where was I going with that? <laughs> anyway, I clicked through all of the listings, looked at all the photos. I wanted to see if there was, I don't know, a booklet, like anything else that could have been included with this puzzle. But everything I found was exactly the same as what we have here. And then I was also curious about this 984 on the side. However, when I looked up other puzzles released by Great American Puzzle Factory in this time period, all of them have a number just like this. So I think it was just their own internal serial number system. So I don't think 984 has anything to do with the scavenger hunt answer. Now, if we could figure out the artist, they might have some information. However, the only information that I can find that might be related to the artist is the signature in the corner that says Mona, or is it Mina, M-E-N-A? M-O-N-A. I, I mean, that's really not enough information to go off of. I also don't even know if that's an artist's signature or if it's a clue within this puzzle. So if anyone recognizes the art style from an artist who was active in the mid 80s, that could be a route that we could go down. And that's about as far as I got. So I looked up the company name and the puzzle name on the New York Times archives. I looked them up on newspaperarchives.com. Couldn't find anything about this puzzle in any of those. I also looked it up on Reddit. I feel like this is exactly the type of thing that Redditors would love to solve, but I couldn't find anything there. So I do think this one is a lot more solvable than the money hunt. We do have that little poem to go off of. There's just so much going on here that we could interpret like as a clue. So I'm opening it up to all of you. So down in the description, I'm gonna have high quality photos of the puzzle and the box. And you know, the holidays are coming up. So go home and ask your families if any of them remember this puzzle or print out the puzzle image and work together with them to see if you guys can solve it. If anyone does figure it out, um, I'm not gonna give you $5,000, but if there is a solid answer, I will make a follow-up video and I will give you all of the credit. And I mean, some people might say that a mention here on this channel is worth $5,000.
I mean, not many people would say that, but I'm sure there's like one guy out there who might say that. <laughs> So I put together a Google form. I'll have it linked down below. If you think you have the answer, submit it to me there. And I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. So good luck. Your code word for watching all the way to the end will be unlikely. A huge thank you to Jenny for sending this to me. And if you want more vintage treasure hunt puzzles, you can watch my videos about the money hunt and the decipher puzzles. And I think that's it. I really hope one of you guys solves it because I really want to know the answer. 